Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason, and we're in our kitchen today because my wife can really cook, y'all, and she's got this thing figured out where she just makes up recipes on the fly. That's just because she's that smart. And she's made, she's got a, an amazing sounding cream cheese blueberry danish this morning, and it just sounds like it goes wonderful with a hot cup of coffee, so I'm going to let her take care of it and show you how to get it done, okay? Now we're going to start with our cream cheese filling because you want the puff pastry to stay as cold as it can for as long as it can. So in this bowl, we have an eight ounce brick of cream cheese and we have a fourth of a cup of sugar. You wanna beat those together until they're nice and smooth. Now that this is all creamed up, now we're gonna add one egg yolk. Now save the, the white, do not throw it away because you're gonna need it for another step. So don't throw it away. And thanks to Sophia, that's a nice ridge. That's a beautiful yolk. And we are also going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. If you guys have been watching me for long, you guys know I don't measure vanilla. So that's roughly measured. Now we are going to mix this up again until it's all nice and creamy. Okay, now our cream cheese filling is done. And I've taken one sheet of puff pastry. And you thaw it according to package directions which is in the refrigerator for several hours. And then you roll it out just slightly. You want it a little bit thinner than it comes from there and you want to roll out the seams a little bit. You're always going to see the seam. Actually, it's going to help you out in this case. No, you find puff pastry in the frozen food aisle near, yes. near, the, near the pie crust, right? Yes. Gotcha. Now we are going to cut our lines. See where the seam is at from where it's been folded. It's hard to see it in the camera, but I think, I think we got it. You, you wanna cut at an angle from the corner to about a finger length from that seam. You can use a pizza cutter or a knife, whichever works best for you. And you wanna cut strips all the way up through here. I'm not measuring the strips. How, how big would you say that is, Jason? Uh, it's two to three inches. I mean, how wide? How wide? Yeah. Uh, you're about an inch. And you're cutting them on a slight diagonal. Now, like I said, if you, if you, like I've told you so many times, if you have to have things just right, get out a measuring device and measure them. I personally do not have to have things just right. As long as it's, it looks good from 50 yards on a galloping horse. Now you want to do this on both, the same thing on both sides. You want just make sure that you try to make sure that there's as many on, as many on the on each side. Yep. You don't want it to be come out Need with the same amount. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to come out with more on one side than you have on the other. That's a little odd. Now, as you can see, all of our lines are, are nicely cut. And now we are going to put our cream cheese mixture down the center mark where your lines are at. Now you don't want to take it all the way to the ends because you want to fold over to seal it up because you want this all to be sealed up like a big old letter. For those of you who know what a letter is, <laughs> Some of you may not know what a letter is because you probably have never written one. <laughs> no, we don't have we have we have, a, we have a, a more seasoned audience. We have a seasoned audience. I'm not I'm not going to say you're old. You're more seasoned. You've been around a little bit. <laughs> Now, some of our younger audience, because we have been developing younger audience lately, you may have never written a letter. You may have to look up on Google to find out what a letter is. I gotta be honest, with you, I'm not sure I've ever written a letter. I'm 42. <laughs> I have written no, lots I, of letters. I think I have. I, think I, have. I have written lots of letters. I think I have. But I am one of those people that still like books, even the smell of books, rather than reading them digitally. I even love the smell of books. I still love the nostalgia of, of writing and receiving a letter. <laughs> I am one of those type of people. <laughs> now, we are going to go in 
and cut off these little wings right here. Okay, now to make it blueberry, we are going to lay out some frozen blueberries. Now, you can use fresh or you can use frozen, but if they are frozen, make sure they stay frozen yeah. because otherwise they're going to leach out everywhere. Yeah. And you can put as many or as few blueberries as you want. Just lay them out. Okay, now we've laid out our blueberries. Now we're going to take this little end and we're going to fold it over. Now we're going to start making it parody. Take one, fold it over, take the other, fold it over, crisscross it. So crisscross all up and down. And you want to go on the same side all the time. You want to start on okay. the same side all the time. That way it crisscrosses. You want to pat it down after each one. That way it seals it to each other. Gotcha. Now you want to do this all the way up. So now because this end is not cut in the same way as the other one, you want to cut off these little wings. And you want to fold this up. Even though it's going to take some of your, your side wings, you still want to fold some of that up because you want to seal it. It's going to be sealed in like a mummy. Now you want to continue folding your last pieces. And these pieces, I would actually suggest leaving those two, taking these two in. Uh, okay. That way it's covered. It's and then this, this one will cover I all see. that. Cool. And see, now you can go back to your regular folding and now it's all sealed in. Now we are going to transfer this to a cookie sheet and you have your oven preheated to 375 degrees. Now I did this all on parchment paper to save the mess and also so I can just do this. Cool. And now it's already transferred. Now we have our egg white that we saved back from our yolk. And you want to beat it up till it's nice and, and frothy. It just, it just takes a little bit to do that. See, all that does by doing that is get gets rid of some of the stringiness. Now, you want to take a pastry brush and you just want to brush all of your puff pastry. Make sure that, that every piece of it gets a little egg white on it. It will help with crunch, it will help with shine, and it will help the next part to stick. <laughs> Okay, now we have some crystal, some crystal sanding sugar. See, what I mean by that is it's just big chunky sugar for decorating. This is Wilton brand. You can buy all kinds of brands. I bought this on Amazon. I will leave a link to that. And you just want to sprinkle some on there. It just adds a nice crunch, a nice shine. It, it works really well. You really don't want to skip it if you... No, it does. It it works. <laughs> yeah, you made something like this before, and, it's, and you're right. You need it. Anytime you do Danish from puff pastry, you really need that. It, it just works. Don't go overboard with it, but you want a nice little... Yep. You want a nice little crunchy top from it. Now, we are going to put this in our 375 degree preheated oven until it's nice and golden brown and the whole thing is puffed really nicely. You want the whole thing to puff really good before you take it out. I'll show you what it looks like when we're there. Look at this beautiful Danish that Angela K. made. We just took it out of the oven. It was, it was going for about 41 minutes, 40 to 41 minutes. And now it's, you can see it's, if you can see it's steaming really good. So we're gonna have to let it cool off for a little bit before we cut into it. If you cut into it too quickly, um, the moisture from the blueberries and everything might just start bleaching out and might make a little bit too much of a mess. Let it cool some, let it rest. We got it on a, we have it on a cooling rack. So let it, give it some, give it, let it rest. And then you may want to go, then you can slice into it, okay? Look at this beautiful Danish. I'll tell you something right now. Angela Kay's a genius. I don't, just by looking at it, I'm blown away by how smart she is. And now, obviously I got to taste it though. I mean, <laughs> Mmm. Oh wow. Oh, that's amazing. 
That's so delicious. That pop of um, blueberry there, fresh blueberry. Exactly what this needs. Sweet, creamy, but not too sweet. Crunchy, best tasty, just everything's absolutely perfect. I got some hot coffee over here, ready to eat it. All right, ready to drink that coffee with this beautiful Danish. It's going to look perfect on a nice weekend morning. That right there, that's brilliance. Angela K is so smart. She does such a great job with that. It's really very simple. She, she did a great job showing you how to make it. So don't be afraid. Try something like that. And everybody's going to appreciate it that eats, I promise you. So thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. My name is Jason. That's smart one. Her name is Angela K. This is Art of Creation Homestead. We love you all. God bless you and goodbye.